We face globally a biodiversity and climate crisis. If we're going to mitigate the effects of those crises, we're going to need to restore our rainforests here in Britain. Restoring the small, unconnected fragments we have left and expanding them. Bigger, better, more connected. Our goal is to triple the amount of temperate rainforest in Devon and Cornwall by 2050. If we're going to hit that target, we need to find new innovative ways of creating woodland. Ways that are faster, cheaper, more efficient, and ultimately more scalable. The idea really came from looking outside and seeing what other people are doing. Looking abroad to other rainforest nations where they are restoring, protecting forests in new and innovative ways. And drone seeding is something that is really quite well established now. But they use it generally for restoring sites that have been damaged by wildfire. I don't think drone seeding has really come into its own here as a viable method of woodland creation until now. an idea that we've been floating around the team for a really long time. A lot of land is very inaccessible and too dangerous to plant. In Cornwall there's a lot of ex-mining sites, there's a lot of geologically unstable steep sites and it's those upland areas that are currently presenting barriers to woodland creation where new innovative ways of creating woodland like drone seeding could be a much more viable option. No one in the team or even the wider organisation had ever tried anything like this before. So it wasn't a case of trying something and improving small parts of it. It was all new. I think the thing we had perceived would be the most difficult aspect of it was the actual technology itself. If he starts to get a little wet, is he? Or... Just go and get a, a bucket, would you? The augers are the, the spreading size is between one and six millimetres and we're spreading things up to 50 mil. So we're approximately 10 times over the maximum diameter so occasionally we're going to get blockages which is what happened there. So we've just got a bunch of hazelnuts and acorns stuck in the auger. Most of the seeding that we do is with smaller seeds, birch seeds, Scots pine. So we're really pushing the boundaries. This is entirely unusual. Right, let's crack on. There were many things to pull together as part of this project, but it was really the seed companies meeting us halfway that helped us do this. We had really hoped to get hold of several rainforest species. The species mix was peduncular oak, hazel, downy birch, wild cherry and alder. Oak is obviously one of the really crucial key species within a temperate rainforest, so that was a very obvious choice but a lot of the other species that were selected. There could have been a kind of a wide spectrum we chose from, but there was a test and trial element there on trying to get a diverse range of size and weight. These are the three smaller seeds that we've got. So the first will probably be very familiar to you. So these are just wild cherry. And then the other ones, they look a bit almost like ground coffee. And those ones are alder. So the birch here are in these kind of bright yellow balls. That's because they've been coated in a kind of like clay mix. And that's simply because birch are such lightweight seeds that if we tried to fire them from the drone, they would just get completely taken away by the wind. That's just to provide them with a bit more weight. One of the key things is whether the machinery can cope with those bigger seeds like the oak and the hazel, but also birch seeds that are wind blown and therefore incredibly minute. So 
originally we thought it might be the sawdust and pellets that would be the blockage but that doesn't seem to be the case it's the larger seats we can hopefully engineer out some of these problems like with the auger blocking we may 3d print more bespoke augers that uh, don't block or don't require as much sawdust and pellets but i think we still can make this work in terms of using larger seats at the moment, woodland creation costs between sort of three to four thousand pounds per hectare. We haven't quite managed to crunch the numbers on this trial yet, but initially what it's telling us is that in order to seed per hectare, it's a quarter of the cost. It effectively means that by a factor of four, a factor of eight, we could be increasing the ability of people to access the option of woodland creation, increasing the amount and speed and scale of rainforest restoration that we could be doing. The fact that projects like this are being supported by organisations and funded by organisations is indicative of a step change in people's desire to see real progress happen in terms of nature recovery. It's an increased understanding of the threat of the climate crisis, the threat of the biodiversity crisis, the need to restore temporary rainforest and the focus on it that has really brought together the conditions needed to actually start doing it. I don't think this would have happened until now. To try and keep ourselves under 1.5 degrees of warming, we need to start finding ways of scaling up our restoration response in a way that is achievable for people. And what excites me about innovative methods like this is that they're the gateway to doing that.